Have you heard the buzz? There's some wild talk swirling around the internet, especially on TikTok. It's all about a big claim. Jesus is supposedly making a comeback on April 8th. So what's the deal with April 8th? Well, there's a solar eclipse predicted for that day, and somehow some folks are connecting the dots to Jesus' return. Sounds pretty wild, right? To know the details of what's happening on the 8th of April, let's dive into the video. The upcoming solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024, has sparked speculation among some people that it could signal the second coming of Jesus. However, it's important for us to understand that such speculation is not based on any concrete evidence. References to Jesus' second coming are found throughout the New Testament, where it is described as the time when Christians believe Jesus will return to earth, judge the wicked, and reward the righteous. The Apostle Paul discusses this event in his letters, and Jesus himself talks about it in the Gospels. While solar eclipses are fascinating natural phenomena, there is no biblical or scientific basis to suggest that they are connected to the timing of Jesus' return. Despite this, some individuals have made predictions linking the upcoming eclipse to the second coming, but these claims should be approached with skepticism. And let's talk about the 8th of April 2024 eclipse. This rare event, visible across North and Central America, generates excitement among people passionate about astronomy, educators, and the general public alike. Everywhere you look on social media, news outlets, and scientific websites, there's a buzz of information, predictions, and tips for viewing this upcoming spectacle. What's fascinating is that some people have noticed an interesting connection between this eclipse and a story from the Bible about a man named Jonah. In the Bible, Jonah spent three days inside a whale before being released in Nineveh. What's intriguing is that the path of the eclipse, where it will be total darkness, is going over seven cities named Nineveh in the United States. This coincidence has sparked discussions about potential connections to biblical stories and prophecies. One particular verse from the Bible, Matthew 12:40, says, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. It mentions Jonah's three days and nights in the whale's belly. And some people are drawing parallels to Jesus, who, according to the Bible, was in the heart of the earth for three days after his death. This connection adds an extra layer of intrigue to an already captivating astronomical event. In Acts 10.40, Jesus rose from the dead on the third day after his death. God raised him from the dead on the third day. It mentions how God raised Jesus from the dead on the third day after his crucifixion. These biblical references lead to various interpretations and discussions about the significance of the eclipse and its potential ties to biblical events. Genesis 1.14, 15 in the Bible tells us about God's creation of celestial bodies like the sun, moon, and stars. These heavenly bodies have a purpose beyond just lighting up the sky. They serve as signs to mark time and seasons. When we see events like eclipses or notice the alignment of planets and constellations, it's not just a scientific spectacle. It carries a deeper spiritual meaning. These celestial events remind us of a sacred covenant established by God with Abraham, a covenant that promised blessings and descendants. Jesus in Christianity is seen as the embodiment of this covenant. He represents God's faithfulness and serves as a living testament to the promises made to Abraham. Solar Eclipses, Ancient Omens, and Divine Messages Solar eclipses have held significant meaning for humanity since ancient times, particularly for cultures like the Israelites who interpreted them as ominous omens. The sudden darkness during daylight hours created an eerie atmosphere, stirring feelings of foreboding and uncertainty. Animals would behave strangely, and plants might react to the unusual dimming of light. Additionally, the temperature could sharply drop during an eclipse, adding to the sense of unease. Some interpreted a red-tinged sun as a sign of impending war, while a black shadow hinted at famine. The question arises, could these celestial events be messages from a higher power? Many ponder this possibility, 
considering the notion that God might be trying to communicate something significant to humanity. Throughout Scripture, we find instances of God using signs and wonders in the heavens to convey messages to His people. Solar eclipses are no exception. In Genesis 1.14, God establishes the sun and moon as signs for humanity. From a biblical perspective, solar eclipses hold profound significance. They are not mere random occurrences, but rather events orchestrated by God Himself. When understood in the context of divine timing, solar eclipses take on a prophetic relevance, offering insights into God's plan for humanity. As we delve deeper into the scriptures, we uncover layers of meaning behind these celestial phenomena, reminding us of the intricate relationship between the heavens and the earth. To discern the significance of celestial events, we examine them within the framework of the biblical calendar and consider where they occur. Many voices discussing the end times view the forthcoming total solar eclipse as a potential sign from God. While a single solar eclipse might not seem extraordinary, understanding its timing and occurrence unveils its importance. Although total solar eclipses happen approximately every 18 months worldwide, they occur far less frequently from any specific location, sometimes only once in several hundred years. The Phenomenon of Solar Eclipses Solar eclipses occur when the moon positions itself between the sun and earth, blocking a significant portion of the sun's rays from view. In the biblical context, there are instances where the sun's light was obscured by darkness, shedding light on the significance of celestial events. For example, during the plagues of Egypt, as recounted in Exodus 10.21-23, God covered the land in palpable darkness for three days, However, the Israelites experienced light in their dwellings, showcasing divine protection amidst the darkness. Additionally, in the book of Joshua, dating back over 3,000 years ago, Joshua prayed for the sun and moon to stand still during a battle against the Amorites, providing a fascinating insight into ancient observations of celestial events. Similarly, during Jesus' crucifixion, darkness shrouded the land from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, echoing the extraordinary events recorded in Joshua. These occurrences during pivotal moments in history hint at the profound connection between celestial phenomena and significant earthly events. Biblical prophecies also foretell future events involving celestial phenomena. In Revelation 6.12, the opening of the sixth seal heralds a great earthquake, with the sun turning black as sackcloth and the moon resembling blood. This anticipation of celestial events resonates throughout the Bible, with multiple passages foretelling the darkening of the sun, as seen in Matthew 24, 29, and Mark 13, 24. For many Christians, a total solar eclipse holds profound symbolic significance, with the sun representing the nations of the world and the moon symbolizing the nation of Israel. Believers perceive these celestial events as potent messages from God, serving as warnings, particularly to specific nations along the eclipse's path. In light of these biblical prophecies, believers are urged to heed the signs and prepare for Jesus Christ's imminent return. The scriptures speak of signs in the sun, moon, and stars heralding his arrival, making the occurrence of a solar eclipse a poignant reminder of the need for repentance and spiritual readiness. Symbolism in Eclipses, Alpha and Omega In Jeremiah 5.12 and 25.10, there's mention of sealing something mysterious, which some interpret as referring to the rapture, a belief that believers will be taken away before any judgment occurs. This concept is often depicted as the rapture of the church. In a viral video lasting about 10 minutes, someone passionately discusses these ideas, displaying a wealth of information on the screen. Among the points discussed are the eclipses of 2017 and 2024, and a partial eclipse in 2023. They draw connections between these eclipses and the first and last letters of the ancient Hebrew alphabet, Alpha and Omega, suggesting that the paths of these eclipses form these symbols in the sky. Upon closer examination, they link the paths of these eclipses to create the shapes of Alpha and Omega, symbols representing the beginning and the end. This adds to the mystery surrounding the significance of these eclipses, 
especially in light of biblical prophecies. The video also highlights an intriguing aspect of the 2024 eclipse. It falls exactly six years, six months, six weeks, and six days after another significant eclipse. The video emphasizes these sets of sixes, although the details shown on the screen are too small to discern. The entire argument revolves around the shapes formed by the paths of these eclipses. And further, the video suggests that these eclipse patterns serve as a sign for people to repent. This is the primary point they're making, essentially that these alignments are intended to prompt spiritual reflection and change. Continuing on, the video emphasizes the importance of the April 8, 2024 eclipse, describing it as the twin sister of the 2017 eclipse, a rare event where an eclipse traverses the entire contiguous United States. This eclipse, part of Saros 139, is renowned for its 71 total eclipses spanning nearly 1,000 years, forming an X across the middle of the United States when combined with its counterpart seven years prior. The video then takes a curious turn by exploring numerical patterns. It notes that the words Elijah and Hebron appear 71 times in the Bible. Elijah, revered as one of the greatest prophets, holds significant importance in biblical narratives. However, the video's approach raises skepticism regarding the reliance on numerical coincidences. Pausing to reflect on the direction of their analysis, the video expresses concern about the over-reliance on numerical patterns, especially in interpreting significant events or messages. This cautious note underscores the potential dangers of placing excessive emphasis on numerical correlations. Further investigation uncovers the symbolic significance of the words Elijah and Hebron. Elijah is associated with remarkable prophetic deeds, while Hebron holds significance as the burial site of patriarchs like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The repeated mention of these names in Scripture adds depth to their symbolic importance. Nevertheless, the video presenter remains cautious about drawing overly simplistic conclusions based solely on numerical occurrences. Eclipse Connections The 2024 eclipse stands out among the 71 eclipses noted as it happens to be the 30th in the sequence. This numerical alignment is linked to significant biblical symbolism, particularly the age of Jesus, known as Yeshua, when he commenced his ministry. The video also emphasizes the significance of the number 30 in Scripture, which coincides with the sequence of the 2024 eclipse. This alignment prompts further exploration into the age of Jesus at the commencement of his ministry, adding another layer to the interpretation of celestial events. The 2017 eclipse is noted for passing over seven cities named Salem, with its point of maximum totality coinciding with an area known as Little Egypt, in southern Illinois. In contrast, the 2024 eclipse significantly traverses 26 additional cities named Salem. This total of 33 Salem cities holds symbolic weight, correlating with Jesus' crucifixion at the age of 33. The exclusion of three Salem cities from the eclipse's path is suggested to symbolize the three years Jesus spent in Salem, also known as Jerusalem, during his ministry. This interpretation further deepens the connection between celestial phenomena and biblical narratives, offering a unique perspective on the significance of these events. Understanding Numerology A prophetic number is a number that some people believe has a special meaning or predicts future events. It might seem strange because how can a number predict something? It's like someone just saying they believe in something and then talking about lots of other things. These talks sometimes become really popular, but just because they're popular doesn't mean they're true. When people listen to these talks without thinking critically, they can end up believing things that don't make sense. They might start talking about one thing, like a solar eclipse, and end up talking about Jesus and his ministry when he was 30. How they make all these connections can be confusing, but they say it's because of numbers. This is called numerology. As we have said, some people know about numerology, which is a belief that numbers have special meanings or can predict events. It's like a connection between numbers and things happening in life. But that's not it. 
Numerology also involves studying the numerical values of letters in words and names. This is often linked with astrology and other mystical practices. Many religions and New Age beliefs use numbers too. For example, you might hear about what your number is or what number someone else is. Even in churches, some people are starting to talk about numbers in relation to the Bible. They might think there are secret codes in the Bible, like in the Da Vinci Code book or movie. But trying to predict when Jesus will return using these codes has always been wrong in the past. People have been doing this for a long time. And every time they've tried to guess when Jesus will come back, they've been wrong. Moreover, the Bible does talk about some signs of the end times. But trying to guess exactly when it will happen is not a good idea. We should be careful about trusting these predictions because they've never been right before. Is The Simpsons predicting the rapture? Have you ever noticed how The Simpsons seem to predict things? Well, this time it's big. They might have even predicted the rapture. If you missed it, someone in a show said, Y'all did The Simpsons, do it again. It's not really about predictions. But if this one is true, it's a game changer. In this TV show, they talk about how The Simpsons might have given us the date of the rapture. They show a bunch of stuff on the screen, trying to connect different events and numbers. But watching all of it for 10 minutes? Nah, not for me. You can check it out if you want, though. They're talking about numerology and using the Bible in weird ways, trying to make all these connections. It's like they're stretching things too far. Where are they getting all this? It's pretty wacky. So, The Simpsons might be onto something big this time. But before we start believing everything we see, let's think about it carefully. All these videos and talks have something in common. They talk about the end times, the last days. Some people say Jesus is coming back soon and we believe it too. But Jesus himself said something important in the Bible in Matthew 24. He said that nobody knows when he's coming back, not even the angels in heaven, only God knows. So when people try to guess the exact day or hour, they're going against what Jesus said. Jesus also warned us about being tricked by false teachings. He said that many will claim to be him or speak for him, but we shouldn't be fooled. He talked about wars, rumors of wars, nations fighting each other, and natural disasters. These things will happen, but they're not the end yet. So while it's good to think about the signs of the times, we shouldn't get caught up in predicting exactly when Jesus will return. We should be careful not to be misled by people claiming to know more than they do. Instead, we should focus on living in a way that honors God, regardless of when the end will come. In Matthew 24, Jesus discusses what will happen before he comes back. He mentions troubles, false prophets, and people turning away from their faith. He says that even though these things will happen, those who stay faithful will be saved. He also talks about spreading the gospel to everyone. Then he talks about something called the abomination of desolation and describes dramatic events like the sun going dark and stars falling from the sky. These are signs of the end times. But here's the important part. Jesus says that after all this trouble, he will come back. However, he doesn't tell us exactly when. He says that no one knows the day or hour, not even him, only God knows. So when people try to use things like numerology to predict when Jesus will return, it's not a good idea. It can make people anxious and worried, like a friend who called me worried about missing the rapture because of some prediction. We shouldn't rely on predictions or signs to determine our faith. Instead, we should trust in God and live faithfully, knowing that whenever Jesus comes back, we'll be ready. That's the message of Matthew 24. Understanding all these, we must emphasize that God's perfect love drives away fear. We should remind people of the biblical truth that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. As believers in Christ, we are securely held by Him, and instead of fearing, we should eagerly anticipate His return with joy. Understanding that God doesn't desire to intimidate or terrify us into obedience is crucial. Rather, His intention is to draw us closer to Him. He is patient and merciful, giving us ample time to turn to Him in repentance. While it's true that no one knows the exact timing of Jesus' return, it's not our place to try to pinpoint it. 
Attempting to set a date for such an event is both futile and potentially harmful. Nevertheless, it's vital for us to remain alert and prepared for the imminent arrival of our Savior. We shouldn't let ourselves become complacent or indifferent to the signs of His coming. Instead, we must stay vigilant, live in a manner that honors Him, and eagerly await His glorious return. So what do you think of the return of Jesus on the 8th of April eclipse? Comment below your views and subscribe for more such videos.